Today, you're going to learn to work with integrated metal weather stripping. Let's get started. First step you want to do is take your interior stops off and then open up your bottom sash. You'll see there's weather stripping along the sill and weather stripping up the sides with these fins that are cut into kerfs in the bottom sash. It may look like you can't remove it, but it really can be removed very easily. You'll see it also on the top sash. It's going to be mostly hidden, but you'll see a little bit peeking out, maybe covered in paint, but it is there. So we'll start with the bottom sash. Once your stops are off, you'll find a nail right about at the top, just on the edge, and sometimes at the bottom here. These little nails will need to be pried out. It can be a little bit challenging, but the best way I've found is using a trim pry bar to pry it out just far enough that I can get a nice small hacksaw right behind the nail and cut the nail head off. Once you've got one side cut off, do the same on the other side. They may be hard to see, but they are always there. This is what holds it in place. There are not always nails at the bottom of the weather strip, only occasionally. In this case, I'm using a five in one, or I can go back to the trim pry bar to get it out just enough that I can pull that nail out. This one, I don't have to cut. I can just pry it out because there's a little wiggle room. Then you're going to pull the weather stripping up and off of the bottom sill weather stripping that it's attached to. In this case, I'm cutting the ropes out because we're going to be re-roping this window. You can see the weather stripping remaining here and down at the bottom, how it overlaps one fin onto the next. You kind of lift it up and off of there and then it'll come off quite easily. And these are the bottom sash weather strips. They've been cut very specifically. So just make sure that you know and remember that these go for your bottom sash. top sash is very similar but a little bit different. You'll notice at the meeting rail, this is the female version of the weather strip. It's a little bit of a J channel that on the bottom sash, you're going to have the mating male side that's going to slot into this to really seal it up nice and tight. These, like most times, are covered in a ton of paint. And in the shop, I typically spend a lot of time stripping the paint off of these, sanding them, cleaning them up, but I don't remove them. Now, when you get your top sash down, you'll notice that it is on the sides and along the top as well. There's these fins that are once again curved into the top of the sash or the side of the sash. You can see the kerf here too. That'll need to be cleaned out if there's dirt or paint built up into it, but usually it's pretty good shape. The nails on the top sash weather strip are in a slightly different position. Right here at the bottom of the top sash, you'll see one little nail right there. We'll need to pry that out first thing we're going to do after we've lowered our top sash is pull the parting bead out. For these, I use duckbill pliers and uh, that tends to work very well. You can get that out of position and you want to come in and get the nail out that's near the pulley. Usually it's at the top, but sometimes at the bottom. You can use a five in one like I am here just to get it loose. And I'll show you another side that you can come at it from in order to pry it out on the next side. Much better. Here, I'm just coming from the inside and prying it right out. Again, the fin is attached. It's laying over top of the top piece as well. You'll see on those corners, that one's removed. And these are just simple, sometimes serrated nails. Um, and uh, you wanna come back with something very similar that'll fit. Now I've moved the sash all the way back up so I can pry out these bottom nails This one, the head actually broke off because I can see that it's come loose, but sometimes you'll have to chip the paint away to really see what you're working with. Once all the nails are out, 
You can lower your sash down below the pulleys and then you can begin to work it out slowly, pulling one side in and getting it to come with the weather stripping over the pulley. Once you get it clear of the jam, you can take the weather stripping off, set it aside and cut or just simply remove your ropes. These are the top sash weather strips with the cutouts for the pulleys. I leave the bottom sill in place and same thing at the top. It doesn't need to be removed. It has a lot of nails and I mostly come through with a scraper. Here I'm using a pro scraper. I have a video on how to use that if you'd like. And the pro scraper cleans off the big gunky parts of paint on there. And then I'm gonna come through and chip it off with a little bit of a chisel, whatever tools you need to to get the paint off so that you can have a smooth operation of the sash when it's all done. I then like to sand everything with 120 grit sandpaper to really clean it up nicely. Same thing on the top of the jam. Sand it, scrape it, whatever you need to to make sure it's nice and clean, but you don't need to remove this. I find it's a lot more hassle if you remove it and try and put it back. It's lined up properly, so let's keep it in place. Once your sash are restored and your jam's been restored, painted, whatever you needed to do, you can now put your sash back in and we're gonna start with the top sash. First thing I do is I put my top parting bead in and my one side of parting bead in and then I'm gonna nail this back into place for one side of the top sash weather strip. I use a little tack hammer for this because it is kind of tight between the blind stop and the parting bead, but I'm putting the nails right back where they were. And in this case, I'm using coppered nails uh, since they did have bronze nails on it before. Put my rope back in and slide that one into the kerf on the side of the sash. And then on this other side, I'll put the rope in and then I'm gonna put the weather strip onto the sash and slide it into place. This is much easier to do from the inside and I'm kind of doing it from the outside so we can have a better angle for filming. But you can see how I can slide it into place because I don't have the parting bead on that side. And then I'm gonna take my sash and push it down and slide my weather strip right up and over the pulley. Nail it in just like you did on the other side and you're ready to put your sash back up to the top. Now we can nail the bottom part of the weather strip. Put your sash back down and then you can fit that last piece of parting bead into place. Test it, make sure it closes properly and if you're in good shape, you're ready to fit that bottom sash weather strip onto the side, just like that, and nail one side off. Only put one side on because you'll need to slide the other side in. Rope your bottom sash. In this case, I used a uh, 18 gauge nail to hold the rope in place sometimes makes it a little bit easier, gives it a little extra added security because it was a little loose on the side of the bottom sash. And now I'll take my weather strip, I'll put it into the kerf on the side of the bottom sash and I can slide it into place, move my uh, sash up and then nail off the bottom here and fit it onto the sill. Nail off the top. It's a little tough to get in there. That tack hammer or a nail set is pretty useful to fit into there. And then once everything's nailed off, nail your stops in, caulk it, touch up your paint, and test the fit. You should have a nice smooth operation of both top and bottom sash, and make sure that they're going into the weather strip kerfs so that they fit nicely, especially testing that your meeting rail lines up nice and tight. This is really an excellent weather stripping I'd recommend to keep if you have it and you can keep it. Windows operate very well and they're very, very airtight. And that's what it should look like once it's reinstalled and restored. 
You'll be good for another hundred years with this weather stripping. It really does last. There are bronze versions for coastal regions and uh, zinc versions in a lot of these areas that are not on the coast. Totally fine. No difference in how you really deal with each other than making sure you're using a compatible nail for the weather strip. And I typically would use zinc nails for this, but they had brass nails, so we went back with it. And you'll see just a little bit of it peeking out. Don't paint that, leave it as it is. It's a sign that you got a well weather strip window. If you enjoyed this video, and you know you did, then why don't you subscribe? Punch that button in the middle of the screen there and check out some of these other great old house videos to learn how to DIY better.